hello from Trend Signal for a review of the data and events the week beginning the 11th of August. Um, most of the action uh, in the markets uh, certainly last week was in the equities and bonds, with the FX markets being relatively quiet in comparison. Um, Global macro events are uh, really dominating the moves in, in markets. You've got the Israeli-Gaza conflict. We've got the Ukrainian or East Ukraine um, uh, uprising there with, and on the Russian sanctions that's followed hot on the heels of the West sanctions on Russia. And then we've got more lately the northern Iraq ISIS conflict there and the event intervention eventually by the US uh, with their targeted bombing. So... Um, as I said, equities have been particularly weak, whilst bonds have rallied sharply uh, as yields fall to historic lows uh, in Europe. And also US Treasuries, uh, they have also followed uh, the trend lower in terms of yields. They've hit a 13-month low. So just remember, when prices go up, uh, the yield or interest you receive falls, so the price and uh, yields are inversely proportional. Uh, and the move or flight to quality or risk aversion uh, has happened as investors have shunned equities, which are deemed to be slightly more riskier uh, and emerging markets. And they've been buying what I call, or what we call, safe haven sovereign bonds. Those are the bonds uh, issued by uh, the German government, then they're referred to as bunds. In the UK, uh, we've referred to them as gilts. And there are other Eurozone bonds have also rallied sharply as the yields have fallen significantly. Uh, so apart from global macro events uh, last week, uh, the data was fairly mixed to weak. The highlight last week was probably the standout German data, which paints a fairly worrying picture of the Eurozone's strongest economy. Both the industrial production and factory orders data uh, last week uh, missed consensus, which, which really sort of underlines the risk in the recovery as a whole in the Eurozone. Um, interest rate announcements from the MPC uh, here in the UK and the ECB came and went without too many surprises, really. Uh, they change in rates. Um, the only notable event, I guess, was Thursday, was the press conference uh, where uh, Mr. Draghi, uh, the president of the ECB, highlighted the risks that the Eurozone faces, especially with the Russian sanctions expected to take their toll. Um, he pointed out the fragility of the recovery, as highlighted, I guess, by the Italian GDP last week, which missed consensus uh, negative 0.2%. Uh, so effectively in a recession there and concern over deflation as well in the eurozone as uh, there is absolutely no pricing pressure to speak of so markets uh, first thing on monday um, looks like the geopolitical risks seem to be abating slightly with the israeli gaza ceasefire still holding at least for now uh, from uh, sunday night and the Iraq situation has been stabilizing in the north as the Kurds seem to have made some gains against this uh, ISIS or the Islamic State uh, army uh, following targeted U.S. bombings. Um, I do believe that the under pressure prime minister, though, has taken a swipe at the president uh, that's in Iraq for violating constitutional rules. So um, still the leadership in Iraq uh, having significant problems. Far East markets rallied. Um, uh, overnight in uh, on Sunday night, Monday, uh, following the late rally in the U.S. Friday night. So it takes the pressure off the markets for now. Uh, so we will see a bit of a risk on reaction now as equities rebound somewhat and bond and gold prices slip back. Um, equities sustained quite a sell-off over the past 10 days. So we may see further consolidation this week, especially if there is or are no further global macro banana skins. Um, data this week, uh, it's fairly light calendar. Let's just get to um, our calendar uh, from Forex Factory. Um, really, we're in the middle of the holiday season, so volumes are typically lower uh, in the month of August, although, as we've seen last week, volatility is definitely not. Uh, and witness the steep rise in the VIX uh, index over the past two weeks. Although we sort of plateaued last week a little bit, but uh, we've hit a, a four-month high. Um, so, on to the data this week. As I say, it's fairly thin on the ground. The probably standout data is the German ZEW uh, economic sentiment, uh, which, as we can see here, is slated to plunge significantly and I think that's as a result over the concern uh, with uh, East Ukraine and, and Russia. Uh, Germany has a significant uh, 
uh, trade with Russia and the uh, ongoing spat of sanctions is going to harm both countries. But I think in the Eurozone, Germany is uh, the most vulnerable. So that will be watched fairly closely uh, to see what the investor climate is like. Um, we then jump to um, UK employment on Wednesday. Uh, we're looking for a further uh, improvement in the employment situation. Uh, jobless forecast uh, expected to climb by 29,000 and the employment rate is expected to drop to 6.4 from 6.5. Um, we have the quarterly inflation report and uh, Mr Mark Carney, the Governor of the Bank of England, talking on Wednesday at 10.30. Um, that'll be followed quite closely actually. The inflation report is one thing but uh, what Mr Carney says, uh, the markets will be listening very intently to that so any sterling assets, UK uh, stock markets and gilts will be uh, particularly sensitive uh, to that. On Wednesday afternoon we have uh, the probably one of the more important numbers of the week certainly in the US, uh, the retail sales data. Um, we are expecting, uh, again, a plus 0.2%, uh, and the core retail sales plus 0.4%, which matches exactly the number from last uh, month. So uh, steady as she goes there. Uh, we then have, um, uh, on uh, Thursday, the prelim data for the uh, GDP in Germany, which is looking particularly vulnerable uh, here. Um, France comes out as well, but the German one is the most important one. It's a bit of obviously the bellwether for the uh, Eurozone. And the concern is that if the German GDP number misses, uh, and the forecasts are for anywhere around plus 0.1% to minus 0.1%, but if uh, this particular number misses, we could see the uh, Eurozone um, have zero growth, which... Uh, Pretty much sums up the, the problems that the eurozone are experiencing. Regular quarterly, uh, sorry, a regular weekly uh, unemployment claims uh, later on on Thursday at 1:30. Friday there's a bank holiday in France and Italy, although that won't affect most of the markets. We've got the, the second reading of our GDP here in the UK expected to be unchanged from the first reading, uh, and then we have producer price index on uh, Friday afternoon in the US bit of a leading indicator for future inflation pressures, but uh, um, that pullback from the previous month to plus 0.1% suggests there is very little inflationary pressure. And then the uh, preliminary uh, reading on the University of Michigan consumer sentiment, uh, consumer sentiment very, very important for the future of the economy, 82.7, the uh, consumer uh, clearly uh, in fine fettle in the US if that reading comes out the way it's expected. Um, so risk on early on in the week uh, in the markets following the uh, turbulent uh, moves on uh, equities and bonds. Uh, we shall see how that progresses throughout the rest of the week. Thanks very much for listening and bye for now. If you would like more information about trading the right way, TrendSignal is giving you the opportunity to see and hear about its services live at a free online seminar. Take a look at the TrendSignal website for the latest events and to book your free place.